Hey friends, Irene Lyon here and welcome to this entire world of nervous system health and healing. Today I have a guest interview for you. It's a new one with Carrie Bennett. Carrie is a quantum clinician and she and I had a chat earlier this year um, all on the importance of the sun, sunlight, being in nature outside and how that impacts our circadian rhythms our gut health, our hormones, our sleep, and much more. In this first chat, which I do hope you take some time to listen to, it's about an hour long, she also goes into a deeper um, deeper dive into her history, her background, what she learned in her early years, and how she shifted to this quantum world and working with the light. Her and I share a very similar story in that we were both in sort of fitness and health and wellness, um, I, of course, went, as you know, to this more nervous system trauma healing world of the somatic healing worlds. She went into this quantum circadian biology element, and it is so fascinating to me. For some of you who know me, you know this already, but those of you who are new, there is what I call the five stages of neuroplastic healing sequencing. I've done other videos on this. I've written an ebook on it, so I'll be sure to link those near here so you can check that out. But a very quick snapshot of these five stages of neuroplastic healing. We want to have obviously good regulation within our nervous system. We wanna be able to relax. We wanna be able to have good activation and all these things. But one of the, one of the first stages, or I should say the first stage of neuroplastic healing sequencing is taking care of our cellular environment, taking care of what is around us in terms of, are we around toxins, chemicals, but also people? What are we feeding ourselves? How are we connecting to the earth, to nature? This chat with Carrie, this second chat where we get into mitochondrial health, something called exclusion zone water, also known as easy water, and also how we as humans are crystalline liquid. I know that sounds a bit strange. It ain't woo-woo. It's actually quite scientific at the quantum level. We talk about that. We also talk about chemical trauma and fluid trauma, um, something that I have been healing and have worked with in my own body. Um, this relates to people who have had electrocution in the past, who have been exposed to too much electricity. We also talk about the dangers, sorry guys, of wireless technology and why that is dehydrating us from the inside out. So if you use technology, which I'm sure you do, if you're around a lot of wireless routers, if you know you don't get outside very much, this interview is a must watch. There are very simple, simple practices. I would say these are biohacks that she teaches, which are completely perfect for this type of health and healing. Be sure to listen, be sure to watch. Um, she gives some really practical tools and we really just geek out on science and um, really this evolution of how we understand the human body, health, healing. I have no doubt I will have her on again so we can dive into some more topics. If you wanna learn more from Carrie, um, take in her courses, watch her on Instagram, she's great there. I will link everything below in the show more section if you're watching this on YouTube. Take in all her information and enjoy our conversation. Miss Carrie, hi. Hi Irene, how are you? I'm good, I'm good. I'm excited to talk. Same. Our round two, we did hormones, sun, gut health, and a few other things on our last talk. So I've said to people, if they haven't watched that already, be sure to do that. Um, cause your history is there as well and our similarities. So for those who won't go and do that, <laughs> I know wife, I'm calling all those out who aren't going to do that, but I encourage you to do that. Can you give like a little Cole's notes of who you are, what you do? Um, and then we're going to get into mitochondrial health and something called easy water and crystalline stuff. It's so cool. Yeah. So, you know, all that, I, I call myself a quantum clinician, which mm -hmm. just basically means I view the body kind of on a different way than I used to. You know, I had a health journey for myself that kind of 
you know, that, 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 that self-healing discovery, if you will, from exercise to massage to nutrition. Um, and in the meantime, I was trying to help other people along the way, had a whole list of cl uh, clients um, that I was also trying to support. And it, n things got better with those other modalities, but nothing really made me feel like I was thriving like the things we talked about in the previous and in the previous talk and then in this talk as well that we're going to go into because sunlight, circadian rhythm, water, taking care of our liquid crystalline structure in our bodies, all of those things, really when I learned how to apply these quantum health strategies, that's what moved the needle and makes just me wake up every morning you know, excited to capture and take over whatever each day has to provide or has to offer. So. Thank you. Mm -hmm. And you're glowing. Yeah. And it's true that you are, I know you're a very busy lady and you have kiddos more than one. Mm -hmm. And they're young. <laughs> they are. They, they are. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know, I hear like, you know, three, six and 11 and I hear each age it has its own demands. So yeah. I, I'm just, just got used to it. It's like, okay, something's going to be demanding and, and it's okay. We'll, we'll work with it. <laughs> yeah. No, it's great. It's great. I had a, a friend uh, the other day say, I think she, her kiddo just turned seven and she said, um, wow, I can't believe I've been doing this for seven years. I feel like I should be a master because if I did a job, I'd be a master at something over seven years, but they keep changing. They keep growing and it's just different. I'm like, but yeah, if you have to, you know, and if you didn't, they'd be a robot. So it's great because they're right. growing. Keeps you on your toes. That's for sure. Something totally. that worked, something that worked a couple months ago. You're like, wait a second. <laughs> got to shift, got to adapt. Let's go. <laughs> you're smarter than me now. <laughs> I, uh, I'm reminded so of how brilliant kids are definitely on a, on a daily basis, uh, they, yeah. especially about their bodies, right? It's pretty amazing. So they know, they know, they know. So the stuff we're talking about today and the stuff that we talked about that we will talk about today and the stuff we used that we talked about before getting my words mixed up. I was thinking about this this morning as I was getting ready. And if we were living in a natural world, no trauma, general stress of hunting and gathering weather, we wouldn't be here, Carrie, would we? Right. Right. And if I think back to in my 20s, I was very active outside so much. I walked to work through trails. I was in the outdoors, all those things. Yes, I was in my 20s, so I was younger. Um, but there was a level of health and vigor that um, is really darn hard to get back as I live in this more artificial world with this computer screen in front of me. Yes, I'm active. Um, so this whole being in nature is so important and yet many people can't be. So I kind of look at your work as actually very important biohacks. Mm -hmm. Whereas some people that follow me a lot will say, Irene, but you don't do the biohacks. And that's true for my work. You cannot biohack the nervous system and offer it regulation with hacks. But what's cool is that with your work, you can. Would you yeah. agree with that? Absolutely. Because when we're influencing the quantum scale, you actually need, you can do small little things that are well-timed that can really create this cascading effect of you know just healing the body or giving the body what what nature does is it gives the body information whether it's light whether it's frequency whether it's even from electrons it gives us information and we it's you need that little signal and then you can kind of sync things back up and so when done correctly i call it these little two percent hacks if you will these mm. little two percent habits you can apply them and have consistent results or see improvement with little short consistent hacks because we're at, we're influencing that quantum scale it's non-linear talk to me about quantum how would you define that in terms of the human body mm -hmm. i think people have heard quantum physics sure right um that level of the universe and but what is going on quantum wise in the human system if i was like completely unaware of this topic what would you yeah. say to me i would act, i would start by just kind of breaking us in, down into a smaller and smaller scale so it's like my body is made up of a bunch of cells and those cells are made up of a bunch of 
proteins and organelles and molecules. And each one of those things is made up of atoms, right? We're going to go back to high school chemistry and that periodic yeah. table, right? Atoms and elements. And then each one of those atoms, actually, when you break it down, it's its unique blend of protons, electrons, and neutrons. Mm -hmm. And so it's hard to think that my body that I can like touch and move really at the small, a very small, small scale, it's electrons, protons, neutrons. And we, ne we know through quantum biology and biophysics and all these fancy things, quantum mechanics, that we can influence the activity of protons and electrons. We can influence those things either to provide health or potentially mm -hmm. to harm the body. And mm -hmm. so my whole past decade has been, what can I do? What, what strategies can I find to influence that level of the body and uh, help the body you know, teach itself to heal or teach itself to be a thriving body again? So this is more than just um, nutrition, cellular health. Cellular health is important but it's like, I'm trying to bring my mind into this. This is like the elements that actually can't be touched. Would you, is that? Right, right, it, it, it is. It's almost, this is like the vibrational component, the yeah. energetic component of the body. It's a, like every atom is just a bunch of energies, kind of electrons spinning, and it's like how they're held together, how they kind of fit in places. This is what we call like the the bioelectrical, like we're, we're, the body, we almost always view it as a biochemical body, but chemistry is too slow to actually be the way that the body operates, you know, in real time. It takes time for a chemical to dock with another chemical and make a reaction. So something has to be below that level that's t basically telling and organizing the body to do that. And that's this quantum scale. That's like, what am I, what information am I inputting at the electron proton level to influence biochemistry? So I kind of view biochemistry mm -hmm. as, a documentable proof that this biophysics is happening, that this quantum biology is happening. It's what we can measure in a lab, uh, you know, in our blood or, or, or in those certain ways, but really something else is that's uh, faster than that is influencing it. And that is the quantum biology, the quantum level strategies. I love what you said about chemistry being too slow because it happens and we know it happens in the body. And then there's almost this other, it's almost like universal energy. Would you agree that yeah. it's, it's, I mean, people have used different terms. Some might say it's source. Some might say it's God mm -hmm. energy, a uh, star Wars fan here. It's the force that binds us all together. Mm -hmm. Yep. Right. Right. Um, but these protons, electrons, and neutrons, and I haven't studied this stuff in so long. Um, can we see those? with science, science, with real science, or are we, they not seeable? Well, we now have microscopes that can show us chemicals, and these chemicals are all made up of atoms with protons and electrons and neutrons. Okay. And so what's fascinating is I, if we go back to high school chemistry, like we got to kind of yeah. dig back into that mm -hmm. and realize like, I remembered like these ball and stick models Right, totally. Or it was like, right, you know, and like it's like almost like little dinosaurs that you were putting together, or whatever it looked like, yeah. chains. When yeah. you actually visualize it under these quantum microscopes, um, it is light. It looks okay. like light, right? And so that's why also I'm big on light, electricity, electrons, because that is really what it is. It, it's light, and all that light also vibrates. So yeah. that's why you hear about frequency and vibration and all these concepts that I kind of used to poo poo as being woo. Um, th that's what it is, right? That's absolutely what it is. Okay. So I'm going to go down a little rabbit hole Ooh, with you. Okay. <laughs> so one of the forms of, um, healing I work with, I don't do it myself, but I've been working with a practitioner, um, for those watching, she doesn't take any more clients. She doesn't have a website, so do not ask. Uh, she's almost retired, but she works with um, dowsing principles, frequency, pendulum work. Um, the old farmers know what dowsing is because that's how they would find water underground. And I've actually experienced a dowsing rod out in the, the boondocks of BC 
and it is accurate. Like that thing starts to vibrate when you get near a water line. When she's worked with me and I've worked with her for many years around um, some of my own traumas around chemical trauma, which we will hopefully get into, that was the only thing that really found what was off. And it wasn't always an organ or a cell thing. Often it was an old, old viral problem or something else. And it never said, this is the problem, fix it this way. It would say, this is what um, your body is in most need of support right now. And it might have had nothing to do with the ailment that I was experiencing. Does that make sense? Yeah, it absolutely does. But then the remedy or the food change or the whatever it was, because it was a whole bunch of different stuff that she would offer, um, I would do it. And it was as if it was this invisible thing that was shifting things in the body. And then that ailment would shift quite quickly. So (laughs) this whole frequency um, electric piece Um, It also connects with, let's say, um, Rife machines, which I'm Mm -hmm. sure you know of Rife machines. Correct. Um, Talk to me a little bit about human health and this confusion at our frequency levels, Mm -hmm. at this cell level, and maybe this is a way to enter into mitochondrial function. Yeah, mitochondria and that water function. Water, easy, right. Yeah. Because... In chemistry for me and biochemistry, being an exercise phys major, it was all about ATP and production of this energy. That And I have no doubt that that's a real thing and it needs to be there. But I feel like the story was written before people understood this quantum level. Would you agree? A hundred percent. A hundred percent. And so when, we're changing. And when people tried to, like when, when people who understood this quantum physics tried to say, wait a second, I think we misrepresented ATP as like this oh, on a pedestal end all be all. Um, at that point, it had been too solidified in the scientific dogma, right? For right. Uh, what, what, oftentimes, right, what happens when science is presented with something that challenges what would be considered a dogma or a truth, we just we just ignore it, right? We, we ignore those people. We ignore that data. Um, someone, some researcher, Nobel laureate said, you know, like basically new science it comes about when old scientists die. <laughs> so it's like you have yeah. to get all of those researchers who had that dogmatic belief to kind of move on and then you can start to bring in this new information. But this hasn't yet really taken hold either. It's sad, isn't it? That it is that sad. Those people have to die so that a new version and a new innovation can come up. It's really unfortunate. Hopefully we can know. change that. It's I just, hope we can change it that. Just, it just takes too long <laughs> it, for that to right. change. What we need is an open mind, right? You know, Mm -hmm. I mean, I know you wouldn't be here having the background that you had unless you kept an open mind. I sure as heck wouldn't be here unless I realized I had to really unlearn and relearn and I was wrong and I'm not right right now either, but I'm just in this continually open-minded learning that allows me, I think, to continue to take on this new information and integrate it here, so... Yeah, if I think about the amount of people I might have destroyed in their back health because I asked them to connect and contract their core muscles through all exercise, I would have, I just, I'm sorry to those people. We need our core muscles, but there was this, there was this time in fitness where it was just like everything. Brace, 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 brace. brace. (laughs) And when I started to uh, understand human development and baby development, I'm like, those babies aren't holding in their bellies and they have beautiful posture. Why Mm -hmm. are we changing that? But you're right. It requires an open mind to consider something different. And just because something hasn't been written in a textbook doesn't mean it isn't real. Right. Exactly. Exactly. Let's talk about mitochondria, easy water. Sure. All those things. So the topic that we were talking about before with like that vibrational component, that frequency component, that's called resonance, right? Mm -hmm. That's called resonance. And we know that every molecule in the body, which, you know, there's so many different molecules, every protein, every organelle, every organ, all of them, and this, again, not woo, measured, right? They actually have their own, what we call resonance frequency or vibration or sound, if you want to put it, you know, more in an audible range. Like a lot of it can be in the audible range. So picture just the body as like this orchestra. 
and yeah. all of these different sounds happening. And what can happen is that that orchestra can get out of tune mm -hmm. or it can be missing certain instruments, right? Mm -hmm. Or the instruments think that you're playing in a certain pace and instead that's not, right? Because the conductor is kind of confusing. So like we have that going on. That's yeah. actually how, if I were to give a you know, certain scientist, I could give them like this jar of what looked like empty water. And I could say, there, I think there's stuff in this water. I dissolved some things in this water that you can't see. What did I dissolve? They actually measure the resonance of the, the vibrations that they pick up. And then they can just go back into their database and be like, okay, that's the resonance of chloride. That's the mm -hmm. resonance of magnesium, right? Like, so this, this is an interesting thing. We can, we, everything we know has like a characteristic of vibration. Um, and so the way that the body kind of supports that is by the mitochondria making a special type of water inside of our cells, inside of our body. I'm going to pause you. Hold that sure. thought. Okay. I know you won't forget because it's your stuff. You mentioned the word organelle. Mm -hmm. I know what that is. I think most people know what a cell is. Sure. I know that a mitochondria is an organelle within the cell, but tell us, give us a crash quick course on organelles and what, where the mitochondria is in relationship to this human body of ours. Yep. And then we'll go oh, into that. Yep. Absolutely. Super important information. Thank you for stopping me. Mm -hmm. So this inside of the cell, so like inside of the body, we have organs yep. and inside of each cell, you have little um, things that function as organs inside of the cell, yeah. right? And they, you know, some 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 clever person called them organelles back in the day, right? So yeah. little organs, if you will, inside of each cell, yes. and mitochondria are one of those organelles. So like one organ, right? One of the organelles inside of the cell. And there's not just one mitochondrion in every in the cells, right? The cells have anywhere between a thousand to a million mitochondria, depending on how much water and energy and electron flow the, the cells have. So the it's not an, it's yeah, it's not like we can only have two kidneys or two adrenal glands. Right. The level of mitochondria within a cell is dependent on certain factors. Correct. All right. Let's keep going. Apps. Okay, great. So, so yeah. these mitochondria and what we alluded to before with ATP, right, and biochemistry, mitochondria. If if anyone were to remember anything about mitochondria, and when I teach like my college courses and, and, and I ask them, I put a picture of one up, you know, on on the in the lecture, and I ask, mm -hmm. what is this? And someone always says, the powerhouse of the cell, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> because I think that we've we've tied that, mitochondria to yeah. making that ATP, and we've called that ATP energy, and yes. so. They do that, right? Mitochondria make ATP. They make massive amounts of ATP. But what's been largely ignored is that the step before the mitochondria make ATP, they make water. <laughs> and so that water is actually the true source of cellular hydration. Mm. It's not necessarily the water that we drink. Like water we drink is important, but yeah. the water our mitochondria make actually is very important for having what we would call cellular hydration and when we look at the body from a frequency um, perspective or like an electrical even perspective, that water is absolutely key. And it's really what I uh, teach my clients. I, 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 give, I help them figure out what strategies they need, their body works with to make more of that water because yeah. that water actually is pure potential energy inside of the body. Now, is that water like my water here, H2O, or is it a different kind of water? It, 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 when it's made at first, it's okay. H2O. Okay. But when it touches any biological surface, right? So like all those things we talked about inside of the cell, mm -hmm. from the membrane to the organelles, to the proteins, to the molecules, all the things that are jam-packed into that cell, those are biological surfaces and the fancy word is hydrophilic or water loving. So they yep. attract that water, mm -hmm. you know, as opposed to a hydrophobic surface, right? We can picture, you know, a windshield that has rain -X on it. I don't know if that chemical rain, yeah, right? the water beads, beads right up. Yeah. Exactly. And so these surfaces are all water loving surfaces. So they want the water, they'll pull the water to them. But when they do pull the water to them, they change the H2O into a new structure, a new molecular formula. That's H3O2. Mm. And, that and that is 
really important. Yeah, yeah. it's really important um, for a couple of different reasons, right? But the re one of the reasons why that's really important, if we were to actually take do some chemistry math, you know, and we, mm -hmm. you know, just does it, ha does this have a charge, right? Or is it n a negative, neutral or positive? Um, again, going back to if I'm looking at water in a glass, water in a glass, it doesn't have a negative charge. It doesn't have a positive charge. Basically, it means the electrons, the negatively charged sub uh, p particle and the protons, the positively charged particle, mm -hmm. they're balancing each other out. Yeah when it's the water that gets structured into H3O2, if you were to do that chemistry math, that yeah. makes that H3O2, it's actually negatively charged. Okay. In order for it to be negatively charged, it had to kick out something that was positively charged, Positive. right? And so it kicks out a hydrogen and mm -hmm. a, a hydrogen, go to that periodic table, right? That hydrogen is the first element. It one. is one proton, yeah. one electron. And protons yeah. are massive compared to a little tiny electron. And so that means a proton is, or a hydrogen is basically a proton, just this massive positive charge. Okay. And so they kick the hydrogen out and the hydrogen lines up right next to that H3O2. So you have a biological surface, this H3O2 that actually structures and rearranges itself in a very ordered way that's negatively charged. And then you have this little, this little hydrogen that says, hey, why didn't you include me? And it kind of stays lined up right next to the H3O2, which gives you a, po a positive charge in the hydrogen next to a negative charge in that structured water, that H3O2. Mm -hmm. That's a battery, that's potential energy. A positive charge next to a negative charge. Look at any battery. You yeah. need what's called charge separation for electricity to flow. flow and it will yep it'll flow electricity through it and that's been researched pretty extensively so we're basically creating water this h3o2 and we're lining them up with our cells so that there is charge which is flow which is health correct in so many ways, from that tiny, tiny scale to blood flow, to lymph flow. I mean, flow matters, and it's all dependent on that H3O2. Is there a name for that H3O2? Yes. What is it's that been, name? It's been given tons of names in the research, but the one that we've, I think, is the consensus that's been settled on is called Exclusion Zone Water, or EZ Water for short. Um, and so that's called easy water. And you'll, you might hear all about easy water. I talk all about easy yeah. water. I love easy water. Um, and so that's what it's called. It's uh, Dr. Gerald Pollack is the one who gave it that name. He really did the pioneering research when it came to this. What's the basis? Like what's the etiology of, of that e easy is, what does that mean? Exclusion zone. Cause I think of that in many, in a different way in the world, it's, but what, what's going on in the cell that's making it exclusion based. Well, when wh what they, they called it exclusion zone because no matter what they put into a dish, let me. This is fascinating, actually. Yeah, you can kind of imitate exclusion zone water formation in a lab setting. Okay. You put you put like oh, it's like almost like a squiggly piece of like a, a piece of Jello, if you will. It, that that's called naffion into a petri dish, like one of these glass dishes. I know exactly mm -hmm. what you're talking about. Yep. That that naffion, it, it's it's a biological surface. It, it completely imitates or mimics a biological surface, right? It's a hydrophilic yes. surface. When they mix water, so they it, they give they put water into a like a mason jar, and yeah. then they would put things into it. Sometimes it would be dye. Sometimes it would be these little tiny microspheres, like little tiny beads, and then like they'd shake it all up so it's all blended, you know, all, all mixed completely, and then they would pour it into the Petri dish. And after a certain amount of time, there would be pure, clear water next to the biological surface, next to the naffion, and the dye or the microspheres would be excluded. Good from that surface. And so they realize there's an exclusion zone and they realize that nothing can get into that exclusion zone except electrons and photons and frequency. Resonance. And photons are light. Photons are light, yeah. Interesting. So we are, and if you picture this, this is what is the most mind blowing to me. If I'm kind of trying to take my body at that scale, have you ever seen like those, those, uh, Netflix documentaries where they like, they like swallow a camera, you know, and they like follow yeah. that camera, right? It's like yeah. through the digestive tract or whatever it is. Yeah. Um, <laughs> um, that, I'm, I try to kind of do that at that scale. And I realize that if I'm this tiny little electron sized camera, 
Mm -hmm. This exclusion zone is everywhere. It's around every surface. So it's literally this highway that I could travel to get to anywhere in the body that I wanted to. Mm -hmm. And that's what the body needs. It needs an interconnected pathway working faster than biochemistry because the, those things in that, in that highway can move at the speed of light. So I have this interconnected highway that really is what allows my body to communicate and to know what's happening with you know my, my, the, my pointer finger all the way to my baby toe to mm -hmm. this part of my brain. It happens because I have that exclusion zone highway all throughout my body. That makes for me sense. Um, I couldn't teach it the way you do, but it re it would explain, obviously, like you said, the electricity that allows reflexes to happen in the way that they do. It's, it's neurological, but there's more stuff going on, as we know. It also reminds me of spontaneous healings that some people might say are miraculous, where you have someone who is on their deathbed, stage four, metastatic cancer all over. I'm thinking about the story of Anita Muraji, her book oh, yeah. is called Dying to Be Me. You'd really like it. Oh. She was like on her deathbed, literally, she's about to die, full cancer. She had a near-death experience and she saw the light, the light, right? I don't think it's a coincidence that that light is what people see when they pass over, but if they come back, their entire being is different, typically, you hear these stories and there's this mass healing that occurs and my hunch is that it's happening at this electrical electrical photon easy water it's like this the it's like the engines were dead and something sparked it back up at this level absolutely absolutely or there was a there was there were roadblocks in the highway right yeah. there was missing movement missing flow again and it can get reestablished. And so all of a sudden that body goes, oh, I didn't realize I had a tumor here. Boom, that was easy, right? Like easy, right? That, that, I mean, I, I, I get it now. I know what to do. I know how to heal that. I just didn't know I had to heal it, yeah. right? And so like yeah. so, sometimes even with things like you were talking about, Irene, with chemical trauma yeah. or um, yeah, chemical trauma, emotional trauma, physical trauma, all of those actually have a frequency associated with them. But one of the things that the body likes to do is wall, it's wall off that frequency, right? Because it's an out of tune player in the band. It's like, right. Ooh, you don't sound good. You're not sounding good. Like yeah. we don't want you in this band anymore. Yeah. And temporarily that's okay. But long term, you get this missing communication happening mm -hmm. where the body's like, wait, what's going on right there? Mm -hmm. what, uh, what's happening and mm -hmm. so that roadblock that missing communication that missing energy flow that can can ultimately lead to a dis-ease dis in the body mm -hmm. well, let's talk a little bit I, I do want to come back to the crystals and a bit more and of course strategies let's talk about the chemical trauma and the sure. um, fluid trauma so for those that don't know a part of my story um it is, it is suspected through my mentors um, that because of my exposure to a lot of chemicals growing up, my parents were veterinarians, not, not their fault. <laughs> mom and dad, if you're listening to this, um, my mom, when I was in utero, she was in chemicals working as a veterinarian cleaning. And then when she was a young woman, she was exposed to DDT in the university because they sprayed the dorms all the time in Manila. Um, and then, of course, that egg was in her mother. And so the story goes. Um, when I started to heal and get my frequencies back online with flow, my system was basically expelling what we would call rashes. But again, my teachers were like, this looks like chemicals coming out of your body and if you look at my pictures on my site it looks like i had third degree burns similar to nuclear nuclear if you know someone is in some kind of nuclear disaster they look like they've been burned um what i had learned through my teachers namely kathy kane for those of you interested who does somatic practice is that when there is exposure to and this isn't like you you smelled bleach one day this is continual exposure to chemicals it impacts um, the fluids 
in the cells. So she will say just it's fluid trauma. So I'm going to park that there for a second because I think her version of fluid trauma is exactly what we're talking about here with easy water. The other thing that's interesting is fluid trauma can also occur um, with electricity, electrocution. So people who have been electrocuted and survive, people who um, are electricians where they're always maybe, hopefully not, but people get shocked. I've worked with a few um, adults, uh, Carrie, who sadly um, were grew up around farms where electric fences and you don't know and you touch them or you're fixing them and you get shocked. <laughs> I think it just, I get shivers thinking about it. Um, but it really is one of the trickier traumas to work with because it's not in a sensation. It's not in your emotions. It's not a force vector like a car accident where you can work osteopathically with the fascia and, and the bone. It is in the fluids. It is in the cells. So what is your take on someone who might think that, oh my God, I was exposed to lots of chemicals or yeah, I was electrocuted once. Um, talk about that. Give me your musings on that. Yeah, it, absolutely. It's so fascinating, right? So this exclusion zone water, mm -hmm. I, I alluded to the fact that it was structured, the, the molecule was structured and ordered. And so I kind of want to talk about what I mean by that. Please. Be because when you, if you were to look at that, right, under a chemistry microscope, right, you would actually see instead of H2O, which kind of, we can all picture that, that chemical formula, water, H2O, what that looks like in, in like a cartoonish way, yeah. you got like this big old oxygen ball on top yeah. and kind of like almost like little tiny legs. You have these two little hydrogen legs, yeah. right, at the bottom. And those H2Os in liquid water, they... Uh, associate with other H2Os in a glass, but it's kind of random. I, I call it like a dance party, right? So I'm gonna dance with this one over here, mm -hmm. and I'm gonna dance with this one over here, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and so they kind of move around freely. In this exclusion zone, it's called liquid crystalline water, liquid crystal water, because the H's and the O's are ordered in a very or set way. It's more like a choreographed dance where they're just there's a little bit of swaying mm. going on. But the H's and the O's actually kind of, they, they don't kind of, they form hexagon ring structures. So picture like a bee honeycomb. Yeah. You have like these honeycomb H, uh, you know, H's and O linkages as these honeycomb uh, hexagons. And there's sheets of them, sheets and sheets and sheets of these honeycomb hexagon links, which is, the, and so it's actually this physical structuring of the H's and the O's that creates the exclusion mm -hmm. zone. But it also then, this ordering of it, this, this crystalline ordering is what creates a liquid crystal. So you have very ordered molecules that can still, they still have a little bit of wiggle room. Mm -hmm. If they didn't have any wiggle room, they'd be called a crystal, right? They'd be like, you know, look under, look at a diamond or, or something along, sure. or ice. Yeah. Hard, right. And so when, obviously we're not hard, we're, we're liquid crystalline. But liquid crystals in physics, right? Liquid crystals have been studied for a long time. All liquid crystalline structures from LCD television displays mm -hmm. to the, the level that I'm talking about. Mm -hmm. um, liquid crystals actually are antenna mm -hmm. for frequency mm -hmm. th and they can store and hold frequency information inside of them. And you, you may have had a chemical trauma in utero. There could have been a chemical trauma in childhood. There could have been a, a chemical trauma, you know, w literally when you were an egg. And what is an egg? It's full of exclusion zone water, yeah. right? Um, and so all of that could have been stored in this liquid crystalline state. And so when you have a trapped frequency in there, yeah. You are almost you're blocking flow. It's a roadblock, mm -hmm. right? It's a roadblock, and so you it's not allowing that liquid crystalline exclusion zone superhighway to funnel what it needs to funnel. And if we go back to really, so many healing modalities are about moving energy. Mm -hmm. When we ex when we kind of move a trauma, right? It's not like I'm gonna I'm artificially trying to forget about it, but it goes basically through my bio field, which is a whole nother topic. Yeah. And then it can go through me and I can just process it. And it's, it's a it memory. Releases. It's not lodged. Yeah. It's not lodged. Right. So it's not that interference field or that roadblock anymore. 
Um, and so when, and so that's, I think, if, I, if I've answered the question, mm -hmm. that's what's happening with chemicals. That's what's happening with the electrocution. All of that was a frequency, mm -hmm. a, a, a massively intense, intense frequency, yeah. right? And so it's, it's, it's fascinating to realize that our liquid crystalline bodies have the ability to hold that information for us. Like, that's a cool thing. Um, but at the same time, again, we have to learn how to work with our body yep. in that capacity as well if we're trying, to, if we have to process something so it can, again, flow and move as opposed to just being lodged in one place. And what is really coming up for me as I listen to you, and of course, I've healed a lot of this chemical stuff. Um, I'm not covered in third degree burns anymore, which is great. Um, is this is where just um, working with one part of the human system isn't enough. It isn't enough to just work with diet or just work with emotions or just work with the cognition, which is, is, is hard for humans because we can be very linear. But there is something quite beautiful about this concept of flow, um, restoring the electricity in a positive, healthy way to the body, which we'll get into soon. Um, it made me think about, um, I was listening to, are you familiar with Zach Bush, Dr. Zach Bush? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, I think he was talking on Aubrey Marcus's podcast and I jotted this down somewhere. So I'm paraphrasing, but he has the belief that all trauma is stuck in our liquids, in our fluids. And my sense is what he meant is the specifics we're talking about today in this exclusion zone water. Would you yes. agree? I, I agree 100% with that. Yep. Yeah, he was definitely talking about that. I remember I actually I did listen to yeah. I think a clip of that podcast. Yeah. Fascinating conversation. But that's what it is. It is. Right? It is. And if I think exactly. about working again, just to share this with the audience, um, certain clients who have had, um, let's say anesthesia. Mm hmm you will when you're working with them and you get them out of the deep freeze the survival stress autonomic freeze response where they their system unconsciously thought they were going to die because that's what anesthesia does um when you process that what do you think you smell coming out of their mouths you smell chemicals and it just boggles my mind that our bodies 50 years later maybe or 80 years mm -hmm. later they're still, it's like in, again, it sounds like our theory here is in this exclusion zone, cellular organelle world, our little uh, suitcases, if you will, of all of these chemicals, all of these experience, all of these emotions, maybe, mm -hmm. that have been stored. And as you tap into it, they start to release in all these ways. Yeah, and my that's sense, exactly it. Yeah, and my sense is you've seen this with your clients. All sorts of crazy mm -hmm. stuff happens. Absolutely, <laughs> absolutely. Um, yeah, it's weird, right? You'll not. It's not weird. I shouldn't say that. It's cool. <laughs> yeah, because you you do you, you people actually um, they they either remember things or uh, there's emotions that get released. Yep. Right? It could be. Um, um, for me, it was mostly uh, uh, when I'm physic when I was physically working with people. It was through massage therapy, mm -hmm. and it was holding a knot that I was just holding because it was like you know at the time I was like, oh, this must just feel good, right? This is some dense tissue yep. right here, and so I'm holding this knot, and this knot softens and it softens, and I have I have literally felt waves of nausea come over me. I felt lightheaded and dizziness, like you know I was about to be put under for anesthesia. Yeah. Um, yep. you know, I, people will cry or they will laugh hysterically or they'll just, you know, just kind of feel some energy or some, some flow, mm -hmm. uh, zing get reestablished. Mm -hmm. And what I think is happening at, in that capacity of like holding an acupressure point or, or an area of tissue that feels really stiff, what you're doing to that, that, that tissue is uh, when it when fascia mm -hmm. experiences continuous pressure, like a, an acupressure hold, mm -hmm. it cr it produces a substance called hyaluronic acid that pulls more fresh water into that tissue. So you almost had a dehydrated liquid crystal, and you dehydrated that memory, or you walled oh, off. Like there's actually research that the body will wall off and dehydrate the fascia. 
you know, even in, in conjunction with an impact trauma, the fascia contracts and dehydrates. Yeah. And so as you're imbibing this area that I you think is a knot, I thought was a knot, with fresh water, you're creating that liquid crystalline structure. So the body is like, oh yeah, this happened. And now we can move it, right? Now it can flow again. And so it's pretty cool. <laughs> that makes so much sense because when you look at someone who say um, has transformed and is healthier again, and when you see them at the beginning, they kind of feel brittle, fragile, mm -hmm. right? And, and, and it's like, you just want to juice them up, right? Yes. Like there isn't that, that, that tissue um, flow. And it, that's, that's really interesting. Very, very interesting. Yeah. There's, there's so much interesting research that actually shows at the fascial level and the, the dehydration at the fascia that that precedes, it's been trying to precede pretty much every disease, mm -hmm. disease. And so, uh, you know, it, it's, it's fascinating when you realize that it's the water. It's not about drinking a ton of water, so it's, but it's about the wa reestablishing this liquid crystalline coherent highway that allows things to happen. And so, I don't know, as soon as, as soon as I realize all this stuff, it's just like mind, it's, mind blowing how cool we are. It's pretty, <laughs> it's pretty bloody cool. Let's talk about what, um, because you're right. It's not about just drinking water. So this might be confusing some people right now. What we, okay. I'll step back. I'm going to test myself. It feels like, it seems like the dehydration at this easy water cellular level is not just due to one thing it's due to trapped emotions toxins lack of movement environmental problems being in a state of fight flight freeze all the time the system if we just go macro the system is losing its flow due to a myriad of troubles now of course Correct. someone might need to work with their trauma and their emotions and their sensations and their movement maybe they've broken a bone and they got to do a little physical therapy and tissue work but then there's this quantum level which we started talking about at the beginning where we want to basically create better flow at this mitochondrial easy water exclusion zone level which creates this crystalline liquid lattice i keep thinking of a lattice that's just kind of lattice is a great way to vibing it, yeah. and moving like the ocean um mm -hmm. So what are the things that you see people do that are not good? I'm going to go backwards here that no. are detrimental <laughs> to their mitochondrial health. And then we'll correct that with what people can do to start improving this situation. Yeah, sure. Gosh, um, you know, one of the most interesting things that I think is detrimental both to mitochondrial health and also will destroy or uh, reduce exclusion zone water mm -hmm. is wireless radiation devices. Can you define what and those I, it, are? <laughs> yeah, <'cause> it, <laughs> Sorry, it people. pains me to say it. It pains me to say it, but anything that, that's Bluetooth, mm -hmm. right? Anything that's kind of cell phone-y style in nature. So AirPods, mm -hmm. Apple Watches, having your cell phone on your body all the time, um, being re in really close proximity to a wireless router um, at work. I've had that, uh, I've seen that a lot, mm -hmm. you know, and just kind of, it, it's, it's, what that does is it will destroy mitochondrial function or it'll degrade it significantly. So the mitochondria aren't making that water as well anymore. And then it also, it's kind of like a, a, a double whammy because it also then will start to shrink that exclusion zone water too. Mm -hmm. So we're, we're shrinking that highway, we're shrinking that liquid crystal, and we're also not replenishing it because the mitochondria can't keep up. And so it does, it leads, it ultimately, um, ultimately it does make us feel or clients feel stiffer, um, dehydrated, uh, you know, tense yeah. quite a bit. And uh, gosh, that it's it's one of the ones that I've seen that if we can start to uh, take those technologies further away from our body, because mm -hmm. that the, the the destructive effect works on a fancy thing called the inverse square law, which means mm. my cell phone here mm -hmm. is is more injurious to my cell phone here is more, hurts more my body more than my cell phone further yeah. away. 
So it's not like I'm gonna, it's not like I'm saying go into a cave and never use a cell phone again, but perhaps we don't hold it on our bodies all the time. Perhaps instead of the AirPods, we're using a wired, wired, wired. headset. Yeah. That one Those is things also so hard. I just have to say, cause so, I, know, I, 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 I used it. them for a while before I had any idea and man, they are convenient. They are so convenient. You can listen to I music know. and rock around your house and do your hair and cook food and you're not getting tangled in this thing. You can hear it when, you know, the hood vent is on. And, and it is really tough to try to convince my good friends, not even, you know, those following me, I love you and I love your brain. Please stop using those, but it's, no. they're so convenient and everyone is using them. It, it became blatantly obvious how pervasive they were when I was at the airport traveling oh. over the past couple of weeks, right? It's, it's, it, everybody had them in. And, mm -hmm. um, you know, I, I let people make their own decisions. I'm not, I'm not going to tap everyone on the shoulder and tell them that they're no. radiating their brain. But, um, but yeah, I, th I think we need to, if we can start to share this knowledge, it's cause it's just not out mm -hmm. there. We share and we say, this is what they're doing. Mm -hmm. Um, and if you are someone who's working with a trauma, a chemical trauma, an electrical trauma, a, an emotional trauma, a frequency trauma, uh, that is not assisting your body's ability no. to flow it again right? It's just not. So the one thing I'll say too is, and I know that I think it was listening to Jack Cruz, which we talked about him in our first talk and just the shift in, um, dis-ease, poor health over the last 20 years, of course, diet, lack of movement, but the more I look at it, the more I do believe it is the, the, A, the artificial light, but this wireless technology that we are permeated with all the time. And it's tough. It's tough to not go into a room or into a hotel. I mean, it is every, mm -hmm. you can't go into everybody's room and turn off their routers, nope. right? So <laughs> there's these interesting um, situations we find ourselves in where we, we might have to be exposed to that so what would you say, like, let's just say someone does work in an office where it's not mm -hmm. hardwired and they can't do anything about it. How do we mitigate or rebalance as much as possible? What are like your top handful of things that you say to your clients? If you can't hardwire your home and you can't be fully, you know, in that kind of network world, um, what do you say? What do you get them to do? I mean little breaks throughout the day going even even if you go to the parking lot of your work where there's one little tiny island with a tree yeah you touch that tree you have to you have to reestablish that electron flow into your body because mm -hmm. earthing is one way we can build exclusion zone water earthing is one way that we can pull electrons to the mitochondria that they can hopefully convert to water okay um so so touching the bare earth, earth or living plants, plants that are, have their roots buried into the soil, we can mitigate it. Absolutely. Um, it just seems too simple, right? It's, and so oftentimes it's hard for me to get clients to do that. I, I, I really sometimes feel like I have to explain deep, deep science yeah. to get someone to like go outside and touch a tree <laughs> because you, it, it, but it matters, right? Knowing what I know about what this technology, the potential of this technology to destroy this exclusion zone water mm -hmm. and our mitochondrial function. And then the capacity that I would have from going outside and touching a tree or going outside and putting my bare feet in the grass that will that's instantaneous it happens right away the effect so it's really important and i can't I, it, it gives i think it gives me hope to be like listen all you gotta do is go touch a tree right like yeah. or go for a walk with your in in your yard with your shoes off or sit and read or heck if like my clients who have the ability they, they still work with wireless technology but they have to work from they get to work from home yeah. it's like be outside if you can yeah. with your feet touching the earth, mm -hmm. uh, you know, so that you, while you're using your technology, at least maybe you're pulling some electrons mm -hmm. in, or there are indoor grounding technologies that I trust. There's one company that I okay. trust, um, that, that if it's someone's truly stuck in this office setting, right? Like my clients who have to work in a hospital mm -hmm. where they can't yes. take lots of breaks, 
um, then that you can at least also know that you're getting some of that recharge, that grounding recharge uh, with, with grounding technologies as well. Can you name that? And then we'll link your link yeah, to that. Sure. It, what is it? Intuition Physician, okay. Dr. Laura Conover at Intuition Physician. Okay. She's uh, done a brilliant job cool. with her products. Okay, we'll link that. Um, so just a note on the grounding, cause that's something I definitely do. And I've been doing more since learning from you and all your peers. It does, it, is feet better or is hands good enough on a tree? Hey, hands is good enough. Okay. <laughs> yeah, it's really, like there's this really cool meter that I bought from Dr. Conover and you could um, tell if you have, if there's, it's called a continuity meter. Okay. So all of these things have electrons coming from yeah. them, right? The surface of the earth, uh, anything that's basically plugged into the earth has electrons coming from it. And you can tell if you are, if you are the con continuity with these, ele in, with these electrons. And yeah, it's cement even for a lot of people. And so like, it was fascinating to be like, wow, I can go into my garage, right? My, my cement garage and still get electrons. Because it's, or it's some, stone. It's earth. It's, it's stone, right? Yeah, it's it. processed stone, but it's stone. Yeah, it's stone that's on top of earth. People have, some people have that in their basements as well. Of course. Uh, and so, yeah, it's really, it's, it's, it's cool to know that it's not just about being, you know, you have to be for every hour, you have to be spend two hours at the beach, yeah. you know, in the water, fully emerged, submerged to get the effect. It's instantaneous, which is amazing. Um, and you can do it like all these ways that we talked about. What about snow? Conducts. Okay. Yeah. Cause here, I mean, we're, we don't get a lot of snow here in Vancouver, but it snowed the other day. It was the earliest it snowed since 1991. Um, and I didn't go bare feet, but I did find a patch of grass under a tree that hadn't been covered. It was damn cold, but sure. I'm not going to get hypothermia from standing on some cold grass for 10 or 15 minutes. You know, right. you put your socks back on, you warm up, it's fine. Um, sure. But that's good to know about the tree and touching. So mm -hmm. everyone listening, if you're using devices at least once a day, preferably a handful of times a day, go outside and touch a tree or um, a bush mm -hmm. connected. Yeah. As long as there's like roots, right? That's the main as thing. As long as there's roots in the earth, it will have electrons and you will soak those into your body. The, 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 you know, I mean, the, the massive amount of electrons that the earth and everything buried into the earth has is, it's huge in comparison to my body. Yeah. Electrons will flow from where they're massive to, into little old me that has less. And so boop, I'll reestablish that it's charge. Like a pressure off. gradient. Yep. Okay. What else? So we want people to ground, touch sure. nature. What else? Yes. Do you know infrared light or heat? They're synonymous. Mm. And we can kind of dive into that because yeah. there's a lot of ways we can get it that will actually expand your exclusion zone fourfold. It's like charging that battery up massively. Mm -hmm. So if you had an area that was kind of walled off or you know that roadblock, you're saying, wait a second, no, we can make, we can reestablish, we can repair this here. Mm -hmm. So um, in infrared, one of the easiest ways is sunlight, right? Yep. Sunlight always no matter if it's hot outside or cold outside, always contains infrared. So that's one thing we can do. And I want to just um, make a note because some people have gotten confused when people are saying see sunrise, they think that they have to see the sun. So I know this and this is I think accurate. It doesn't matter if you cannot see the full sun, it's light. It is the it's light the coming from the sun. So even if it's a cloudy day, mm -hmm. even if it's raining, Mm -hmm. getting that um, light into your eyes and preferably a little bit on your skin, correct? Yes, yes. If you can, that's great. That's great. Depending on the temperature. Sure. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. It's easier, easier said than done in some areas. Right? I know. So. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay. So that's light. And then the, there are devices. That there are devices. So there's these red light therapy panels mm -hmm. and there's sauna right? They, they both sauna. give infrared. Yeah. Even a traditional sauna oh. gives infrared because infrared is another word for heat. Interesting. There's like, there's the, the infrared range runs from like set, like mid 700 nanometers. And this can, what we'll go into this all the way out, you know, 10,000. It's a huge range yeah. of light. 
we perceive some of that range as heat. We will feel, humans will feel mm -hmm. some of that infrared range as heat, some of it we won't. So anything that gives us heat, a campfire, mm -hmm. cuddling with a significant other or a pet, yeah. right? Moving my body to make more infrared, more so like exercise, right? Okay. More heat, um, a hot shower, a hot bath, uh, there's a lot of ways that okay. we can we can get this infrared, but I find and I find it to be really really important um, for those of us who especially are in these colder northern climates. In the winter, we work indoors, we yep. live indoors. We're not you know getting it outside as much. So infrared, if you have a sauna, great. But if you can take a hot bath or a hot yeah. shower, using my continuity meter by by def, by law, tubs and showers have to be grounded. Right, they have to be earthed. So right. I've liter you can literally touch the ring around the drain and you'll get the earthing effect. You'll get that uh, warmth from the heat, right, from the water. Yeah. So it's a really cool support strategy. So yeah, we know that we, we say like, take a bath, it feels good, it, it's, which is beautiful mentally, right? It absolutely yeah. has yeah. like that self-care capability, yeah. but it's also influencing this quantum level as well. That's so great. What's one other thing? What's one of your other favorite go-tos? We've got grounding, we have red, we have heat, infrared, this means saunas too, right? Just to be clear. Yes, so all types big... of saunas. Okay. Yep. All types of saunas will, will do it. Um, you know, it, like I said, being with a significant other or mm -hmm. cuddling or something like even a warm blanket, blanket. You can pull your old infrared into you. Um, and believe it or not, getting cold yes, makes let's... your body make more infrared. So, so this is sort of paradoxical because we just said get warm. Yes. What's the, uh, what are the reactions going on with cold? Sure. It's so interesting, right? Because one, getting, like having a bath or a shower or a sauna, we're applying infrared mm -hmm. to our body. Mm -hmm. But in response to cold, the body needs to heat itself up, right? Makes Otherwise sense. we get hypothermic, right? And yep. we, we die, unfortunately. Mm -hmm. um, and so, so the body has a lot of mechanisms by which it can make more infrared, including our mitochondria. So feeling a little bit of cold, our mitochondria say, wait a second, we got to turn on the heat. And I so see. that helps them not only, it makes heat for us, it helps them make more of that water that gets structured into this exclusion zone water. And they're making this infrared that charges up that battery, that, that exclusion zone builds that exclusion zone even more. So well-applied cold therapy can also be supremely supportive of this. And it's not like you know, you'll see influencers doing these ice baths yeah. at, you know, I don't even know, what's that, like 30, 32 degrees, 33 degrees, uh, and they're they're in it for 10 minutes. It doesn't have to be like that. I agree. Like, you know, anything colder than your body temperature, yeah. your Is mitochondria it... have to, right? yeah, so yeah, it's, it's like, enough. if you, I tell people sometimes you take that bath and then you just let the temperature naturally cool in the tub. That tub temperature gets to be like, what, 90, maybe you let it get cool, a little yeah. cooler, 85, but still you have to generate your own heat. Mm -hmm. So um, so that's a cool place to start. We, You and I have like the, the beauty of ambient cold. air. Yep. Cold <laughs> air, right? Yeah. And so one of the coolest shifts was my mom working through this process mm. for herself. And she was just like, yeah, in the morning, I just sit on the deck and you know, it's like, I just don't wear my sweat, like my sweatshirt, my coat. I just sit out there until I'm cold. She's like, it used to be 60 seconds. She's like, now it's 10 minutes. Yeah. And it, it just feels so good, right? Yeah. So the body will respond and adapt and be more, uh, more efficient at making this infrared, hence more efficient at keeping our exclusions on water strong. Love it. And you know, I think don't be afraid to take your jacket off if it's cold out. And this is my neighbor. Kids do it all the time. Like they going want, back to kids. Yeah, I don't want my jacket. I don't want it. It's like they yeah. think they're being difficult, but they just naturally know it feels good. Yeah. So be that person who's walking outside in the rain without, you know, of course, if you're going to work, that's different. But if you can be around sure. your home, go for a 10 minute walk, get mm -hmm. some of that light, get that cold. Yes. All in service of this cellular health, mitochondrial yes. health. Exactly, exactly. And something that you would really appreciate, Irene, yeah. I'm, you know, a, a true nerd, right? Always learning. Mm -hmm. Like I know you are always learning. Mm -hmm. I'm finishing up this course with a really amazing sound researcher, mm. John Stuart Reed. Sound applied to the body creates infrared. So of that's vibration. It vibrates the molecules a uh -huh. little bit faster and they yeah. collide and that collision makes infrared. So mm -hmm. that's the, the healing benefit of like, let's say uh, 
uh, Tibetan bowls, Drum, bowls, right? Drums. Drum, exactly, exactly. Yeah. Or even those of us who, the people who have studied voice, like how our own voice and yeah. hearing our own voice can also. Yeah. Uh, it even so, it's really cool that even just playing a really awesome song or something that feels healing, right? Like something that feels yeah. there. It's very subjective too, which is yeah. cool. Yeah. That can support this as well. So it's something that I'm really kind of starting to dig and dip my toes into and apply That's more great. and more. But sound is really cool too. Very cool. What was the name of the person again? Just to John Stewart Reed. John Stewart Reed. Awesome. He developed. I, 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 this is just a side note, but yeah. he developed this instrument where you apply s sound frequency to water, huh. like a dish of water, yeah. and then shine a light from above. And certain frequencies will literally, you'll see an organized water into a geometry that looks like a snowflake or Whoa. a pattern, right? It's called cymatics. So like he really gets the whole intersection between light and water and energy and information. It's just really cool. Very cool. My husband, um, Seth, is a composer by trade. He went to school to be a composer hmm. of percussion. And um, I'll link his music site here because he has some beautiful sound healing um, elements cool. that um, are great to listen to. And yeah, he, he has a full drum kit downstairs and it's loud and obnoxious, but when it plays, you feel good. The vibration goes through your body. It's like going to the orchestra, you know, yeah. your hairs stand on end or hear, hearing a really good opera singer. It just goes right through. Yep, absolutely. And you're building exclusion zone water at the same Boom. time. So. <laughs> okay, so exclusion zone water is important. We need it for hydration. Um, it's not enough to drink a lot of water. We need to have this cellular health. Um, mm. It also seems like, I remember seeing a post of yours a while ago. Maybe it was yours. Maybe it was someone else's. It's like when we were kids, we weren't walking around with water bottles all day long. It, something was clearly right because we all survived. Um, yep. And it was that play. It was that being outside. It was being in the dirt, in the playground. Um, so, and then we're crystals, we're liquid crystals. We are liquid, which means your frequency environment, it, which is why we're affected by like negative people. Yes. So then who, who do we choose to share our time with, yeah. right? That will either reinforce and, and heal this liquid crystal, or it can really start to destroy that liquid crystal. So again, being aware of who we share our energies with can really matter. People, environment, what we put into our mouths what we all expose our skin mm -hmm. to, all the things. All the things. Thank you, Carrie. Oh, this was such a fun chat, Irene. I loved it. I it loved was it. good. It was good. And um, you have so many resources. So I'll just say, if you don't follow Carrie on Instagram, if, you're on, if you are on Instagram, follow her there. If someone isn't on Instagram, what's the best way to get your information and your courses and all those things? Just email me, carriebwellness at gmail.com. Okay. And I have no problem. I'll send you a link to my, my homepage with all the information on my courses and stuff. Great. And you do have a homepage. So we'll, we'll put all that stuff from... Perfect. Perfect. Thank you so much. We will talk to you, no doubt, again. I'm looking forward to it. <laughs>